Monster Itch Ghost Attack by David Labar Chapter 5 I didn't need to turn on my light. The ghost was lit with a soft glow. No, that's not right. No light spread from him, but I could see him as if the lights were on. I guess the ghost wasn't the only one who was getting used to things that frightened him. I was still sort of scared, but I wasn't terrified. He reached out a hand. Was he going to leave another message on my arms? Your messages hurt me. They hurt a lot, I said, scrunching away from him. He paused, but he didn't back off. Then he started to reach out again. I'm only a kid, I said. It's bedtime. I can't go running around right now, trying to help you. I'd get stopped by the first adult who saw me. If you want Sarah and me to help, wait until morning, okay? This time, the ghost backed away. I guess he understood me. Great, I thought, as he passed through the wall. Now I'll never get to sleep. But to my surprise, the next thing I knew, it was morning. I checked my arms. The blotches had faded a lot, but they were hard to miss. My grandparents let me help make breakfast. I like to cook, and I especially love making French toast. The only tricky part was that I kept having to shift and turn as we moved around the kitchen so they wouldn't notice my arms. I would have put on a long sleeve shirt, but I didn't bring any. Right after we started eating, I felt that too familiar itch. I looked past Sarah at the bottom of the steps. The ghost was there, moving toward me. The rash started to blossom. I'll help, I shouted at it. I already said I would. Oops, everyone turned toward me. I felt my face flush as I stared down at my plate. Afraid to look up, I searched my mind for a way to explain my outburst. Thanks, Sarah said to me. I knew I could count on you. She turned toward our grandparents. I need to do research on local ghosts. Our newspaper back home publishes stories kids write about their vacations. I asked Alex for help, and he told me he needed to think about it. I guess he made up his mind. Grandma and Gramps exchanged glances and then shrugged. I was happy Sarah had explained my shout, and I was happy the ghost had backed off. Yeah, it will be fun to go into town, I said. Who knows what we'll discover? So, right after breakfast, Sarah and I got our bikes and pedaled down the road toward Thistles Falls. From what I'd seen online before I left home, the main part of town was about five blocks long, filled with shops of all sorts. There were also some businesses on the side streets. I'd planned to visit the ice cream shop, the toy store, which had a lot of board games, and a kite shop. But all of that would have to wait until I solved my itchy problem. There was a big banner stretched across Main Street right at the start of town. It read, Celebrate This Old Days. That could be fun, Sarah said. Right, but I think this will be our first stop. I pointed to a small building in the middle of the block. I pedaled across the street and coasted my bike to the curb by the Thistles Falls Historical Society, right between the First National Bank of Thistles Falls and a coffee shop called Drips and Drops. I expected the Historical Society to be a dim, dusty place, sort of like my current bedroom, but it looked a lot like the school library, with big wooden tables, lots of bookshelves, and plenty of sunlight streaming in from large windows. Can I help you? The man behind the information desk asked. A nameplate on his desk read, Morton Holworth. We're trying to learn about local ghost stories, I said. I was half afraid he'd laugh at me, but his body jolted a tiny bit like he'd been waiting for someone to push his start button. Excellent. We have a whole section dedicated to that. Follow me. Mr. Holworth dashed to a file cabinet at the other end of the room and pulled open a drawer. Here we go. This is a good start. It's newspaper and magazine clippings. He handed me a thick folder. That should keep you busy for a while. If you need more sources, we have several books dedicated to our ghost and many others that mention them. I sat at a table and slid half of the material to Sarah. Let's split it up. Look for anyone who sounds like. I glanced over my shoulder to make sure the man wasn't close enough to hear me, then whispered. 
our ghost. Apparently, Thistle's Falls was a good place to live if you wanted to hang around and haunt people. There was no shortage of ghost stories connected to the town. There were railroad brakeman ghosts, tragic romance ghosts, stranded pioneer ghosts, and pretty much every other kind of ghost you could imagine, except for my ghost with the vest and the visor. I didn't find anything, I said to Sarah after I looked at the last article. Same here, she said. Think we should go through the books? Later, I think we need to build up our strength with some ice cream, I said. I like the way you think, cousin, Sarah said. I got up and handed the folder back to Mr. Holworth. Thanks. Leaving? he asked. Yeah, come back if you have any more questions, he said. I don't get a lot of visitors. We will. I headed for the door. I looked up the ice cream store before I left home, Sarah said. It sounds great. So did I. I guess that was another thing we had in common. I pushed open the door and found myself face to flank with a horse. I slid to a halt as the horse's tail swished past my nose. Oh my, Sarah said as she stumbled into me. Run, I said. It wasn't just one man on a horse. It was six of them, and it looked like they were robbing the bank.